So what's it been? Three weeks now, maybe going on four weeks here in our state of California that we've been experiencing this crazy heat wave. We've been experiencing three-digit heat days. Yeah, we've had it before. Right? Yeah. I mean, we're used to it, the cycle. Sure. But recently, here in the state of California, they came out with a proposal to ban ice engine sales by 2035, right? It'd be hard to stay cool with no ice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I had That's to throw good. that in there. But the very next day... So internal combustion engines. Correct, mm -hmm. gas engines, ice engines. Mm -hmm. But the very next day, they came out and said, oh, by the way, we need to conserve power because the current state of our power grid here in our sunshine state of California cannot keep up with the demand, right? Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, here in California, you know, it's, it's nice they want to come out with this carbon neutral by, say, 2045, right? Mm -hmm. 2035, they're proposing the ban of the ICE internal combustion engine by 2035. 2035, sales of new cars. Right. Yeah. Now, they said, hey, if you have a gas engine and you buy, you go out into the private marketplace, used cars, you can buy used gas engines. That's not a problem. But we're, they're just focused on new car sales, right? For now. For now. So, you know, my, my question I'd like to uh, propose today is, you know, here in the state of California, can our power grid handle the influx of these new EVs that are going to be coming into the marketplace for what you and I are experiencing now in the state, you know? I mean, yesterday I kept getting these text alerts. You, you probably got them as well, right? Conserve. We've been on flex alerts just about every day now. Well, I was listening to the radio driving home from work yesterday, and of course I got through the emergency alert system right. that uh, we are in a uh, heightened state of instability on the electrical grid, and um, it was about 5.15 on the way home yesterday, p.m., mm -hmm. and uh, you know, obviously here in California when you're triple-digit heat, when you get home and your house is, you know, 95 degrees, you're going to want to cool it down. Absolutely. So when people get home from work, the first thing they do is try to cool the house down, flip on the AC. So that's going to pull power out of the right. grid during that time. So there just, you know, obviously isn't enough power to meet demand when everyone at the same time. And, you know, God forbid you have to wash your clothes and turn on your washing machine at the same time. Right. It just That's just too power. much power. Right. So. People I know around here are, um, you know, they're they're reorienting their schedule, trying to do their clothes maybe in the morning before they go to work when the energy is avail more available yeah, than or, at night or, or it's off hot. peak hours maybe. Yeah, that's off peak. Yeah, and I think you know really what we're experiencing is the fact that um, you know natural gas and nuclear have always been the traditional form of uh, electricity production here in California. Right. And you know, the state has tried to bring renewables into the mix more and more over a period of a decade. And uh, renewables being, you know, wind and solar. So, you know, but those are intermittent, you know, they, they when when there's wind, there's power. When right. there's no wind, there's no power. Right. So it's an on demand thing. You know, if it's windy at night, which it usually isn't <laughs> There would yeah, be not, power, not too much. but you know it's pretty. It, it you know calms down. Right. So then during the day, if there's no sun, there's no electricity being produced. So then, the next th the next big thing is for um, large scale uh, batteries to um, hold these renewable um, power generation of electricity. Um, unfortunately, we don't have much of that. So there's very little of the battery storage that's been built into the infrastructure. So so we're looking at, you know, these renewables are in on-demand, not in on-demand, but they are in on or off cycle. When they're on, they're available. They when they're off cycle, they're not available. And so there's no way without, without a large battery system to compensate. So they've been, uh, you know, shutting down uh, nuclear, shutting down uh, natural gas power generation, 
and hoping to replace it with the renewables. But unfortunately, what we're experiencing here is that the more renewables we have, the less stable our power grid becomes. Right. And when you know we have our on-demand cycles uh, after hours, especially in the summer when it's so hot and people want to come home from work and you know if you've been out working in 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 the heat during the day, you want to get home, you want to relax, you yeah. want to sleep, not Absolutely. in the heat, you want to cool down right. and um, you want to you want power available. Yeah. So I guess the other thing is. Uh, you're probably going to tell me about EVs. Oh, absolutely. That's probably you know. the next thing. I haven't. You haven't told me what you're going to ask. No, today. no. Um, EVs, right? Obviously, we all know Buick, right? The automaker Buick. Buick recently just came out with a statement and said they've made it clear that the future lies in two directions. First, the brand will only sell EVs after 2030, and second, they're only going to sell SUVs. So. That, that's their game plan. So obviously, that's going to be putting more of an influx of power demand here in our state. Well, sure, so. sure. Well, the governor came out this week and he said, yeah, well, you know, conserve energy from 4 to 9 p.m. Or between 4 and 10 p.m. I think or down in San Diego nine. County, it was 4 to 10 p.m. Right. Here in Riverside County, it was 4 to 9 p.m. And I think in up north, it was 4 to 9 p.m. And as a follow-along statement to that, he said, oh, yeah, and, and charge your EV after those hours. Okay. So I guess that's because the house has cooled down and people are flipping off the air and right. there's more power available. But um, we don't have that many EVs charging in California today. No. So unless there's something done on the power generation side of the equation and we bring in these new EVs by 2035, 100% sold new right. only EVs in California, where's the power going to come from to generate those? Now, the question becomes, um, and I'll get back to this Buick thing yeah. here in a sec, the way I see it. The question becomes, is that something that you want to experience in your household? No. It's a personal decision <laughs> for all of us, right. Right? right? Whether you want to have to be subjected to this. And I and I and I know that, you know, over there in in the Denver area, many households have opted for the smart electric meter, um, which during an electrical emergency emergency mm -hmm. that they could, you know, um, pull from? Well, they could turn it off turn or they off or, or they, they could reach in there and they could um, um, set your air conditioning to a higher temperature so it wouldn't cool down lower oh, I see. than that. You see okay. what I'm so saying? The, the gas companies smart. can go so in interconnected. and the they electric can control it. Yeah, okay. but it's an opt-in program. It's voluntary and all that. But it, people, I, I, it happened last week where they did that, and uh, people were kind of upset because they said, what emergency? There's no emergency. Yeah. Oh, you mean because there's less electricity available, that's the emergency. You know, they were thinking emergency is more like, right. you know, we need this for, you know, public safety yeah. and, and, uh, and other, other reasons. Yeah. But getting back to this Buick thing, I think Buick is a great brand. They've been around forever. Oh, yeah, a long and, time. And, you know, they, they've put out some really good products. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're going to focus on SUV sounds like a great niche for their brand. Mm -hmm. And then an SUV electric only vehicle product offering, yeah. to me, sounds like a second great idea. Um, they're probably trying to get ahead of some of the other car manufacturers. But then you know, look look at it this way, isn't isn't Buick a, a GM product? It is. Okay, so then GM is a big big car manufacturer with all these different brands: Chevy, Cadillac, you know, GMC, GMC. Um, so I think it's really not just Buick. I think it's General Motors that's looking at their product mix, right. and, they're, and they're saying, oh, well, this one brand over here, you know, if we could push all EV sales to that one brand, that works really well mm -hmm. for us as a corporation. And then now look at what's left of the mix of ICE and EVs that they're going to produce, because obviously they're still going to sell ICE or hybrid ICE yeah. vehicle, battery electric vehicles. Um, to the rest of the nation who are not California, because California isn't the whole country. No. California is one of 50 states, right? So they have a lot of products, and I mean, a lot of, of 
of customers in other states that want to buy internal combustion engines. Mm -hmm. So obviously they're still going to make those. Right. Um, are they going to go 100% electric? That corporation here in the next 15 years? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think. I don't we, think we, we can. Know that I don't. They think, don't know that. I don't think we collectively the we here on this globe have enough minerals to supply an all electric fleet in right. the United States, right. let alone the whole world. That's gonna be an interesting um, uh, challenge. I mean, you know, mandates are one thing, laws are another, right? But, but then now you gotta get into the supply. right? And if the critical minerals that are required to produce these EVs and these battery electric vehicles yeah. are not available, which we are reading yeah, it's is, tough. It's is, tougher and is, tougher for the mines to is mine the, this. Is where it is right. when this ramp up of demand occurs, then what? Okay. But the interesting thing about this Buick uh, article that you were talking about is that the uh, price of the vehicle is... It's going to start around $50,000. Okay, so they knocked out a few people that can't afford to buy it, Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's just for that brand. Mm -hmm. But they could still buy other other cars yeah. uh, that are probably cheaper on the EV side. I think thirty six, thirty eight thousand dollars. I think is one of the cheapest EVs I've seen out there. I could be wrong about that. And then ICE engine vehicles are cheaper than that still. Right. So you know, um, where does still that go? Options. Right. Where does that go? But yeah. you know, it'll be interesting in five years here in California to see what kind of alerts we're going to get coming home at night about our electric grid and power uh, demands and, cons and, and the ability uh, of, uh, you know, the power generator to um, meet demand right. or inability to meet demand. Right, because how much electricity are we producing here in the state of California? Maybe... 25, 35 percent? Yeah, isn't that... And everything is outsourced? Isn't, now, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So we're dependent okay, upon outsource. other states. Now, outsource. Here, here's an outsource for you, right? You realize the amount of pollution that is produced on the critical mineral production side to manufacture EVs, battery electric vehicles, mm -hmm. how much pollution is involved with those minerals to produce those vehicles? Okay, let me ask you. How much of that's mined in the state of California? Zero. Okay, how much of that's mined? Well, zero, I mean, maybe a little bit. A little bit. Tiny. Tiny bit, okay? <laughs> but how much of that is mined across the United States? Eh, probably slightly more. Yeah. So most of it is mined elsewhere, outside of the United States. Right. So California's legislature has effectively... Um, outsourced the pollution associated with the manufacturing of these clean electric vehicles right. to countries that don't have our EPA standards. Right. That should be a concern. Yeah. What do you think? Definitely. But not, not to the state of California right. because it's been pushed outside of our border. Right. So it's not our problem anymore. It's somebody else's. Right. There's the federal EPA That's an standard. inconvenient truth, isn't it? Right. And then California, like you said, we have... Our standard on top of that. I guess a lot of this is my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate your opinion. That's why we have these sit-downs and, you know, we discuss. It's just our opinions. But this is what's happening now. This is real-time events that, yeah. we're, that we're experiencing. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's stop using fossil fuels. Let's go home at night and plug in our battery electric vehicles and then... We'll, we'll not only have rolling brownouts, we'll have rolling blackouts. Well, that's the next thing, next thing I was going to talk about, too, are these, you know, power outages, or as we refer to them here in California as rolling blackouts. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned a, a, an article here um, a few days ago that you shared with us, and maybe you could talk a little internally, bit about it. Internally, office, internally? California, where they're, they're trying to ban gas... Natural gas, clean burning gas, oh, stoves, yeah. and new home sales. I've read so many articles the last week. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It, it looks like, 
It looks like the, the, the environmentalists here in California got the ear of the legislature and, and they're set to pass laws to um, eliminate natural gas appliances in our homes. Uh, so what do we have? We have stoves, ovens, washer, wash, dryers, uh, right? dryers, dryers, gas dryers. We have hot water heaters. Mm-hmm. And then we have you know uh, gas-powered pool heaters or spa heaters. Right. So they're estimating that up to $30,000 is the retrofit cost for a homeowner. And if they were to pass this as a law, which they're set to do, um, then we have to rip everything out and spend each homeowner on our the, dime on our dime now that's that's quite now, a tax now, right especially for let's say a young couple that just bought a new home in the last couple of years you know it's a starter home and they have all gas appliances which is very low um pollution emitting yeah, it's clean burning gas very inexpensive to operate because electricity is far more expensive right. to operate those appliances than natural gas and so now the savings that they have been experiencing with the gas appliances are going to go away, and mm-hmm. now they're going to have this $30,000, dollars twenty five dollars to $30,000 tax that's forced upon them. It's just, it's just how does that represent uh, the, the, the homeowners in the state of California in a positive way? I mean, it does so little for the environment, and it does so much harm for the homeowners. Truly. And again, is our power grid going to be able to handle <laughs> that much more influx of so we're getting, pulling so, power? So, so now, you know, set aside, you know, during the summer, the heat, the air conditioning use, now the EVs plug it into the grid. Now all the appliances would be electric. Right. So the demand side of the equation is increasing. Oh, absolutely. And where's the work being done on the supply side? I mean, they shut down San Onofre. They were going to shut down Diablo Canyon nuclear plant. Uh, Now I hear that two weeks ago um, they extended the life of Diablo Canyon for five years. I think the governor wanted 10 it's extended for five and then another review. So it may not go beyond five. Right. So where's the new supply coming from? Okay, I, I get it, Rich. 25% of the energy is produced here in California. Where's the rest of it coming from? It's, it's, it's outsourced outside the state of California to all the other energy producers in other states that are burning fossil fuels to produce electricity right. so that we here in the state of California will have a cleaner carbon neutral right? carbon neutral environment is the goal. Well, it's not carbon neutral if it's outsourced to another state, is it? No. It's just smoke and mirrors. But it looks good. Right. Yeah, especially I mean it's just gonna hurt us here. You know, I mean we we have a beautiful state we live in, but we pay more. It's only going to hurt the people that can't afford it, which is most of us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it affects everybody. It affects everybody. Everybody. It affects everybody. You know? Um, you know, I'm seeing on the news, the local news down in San Diego. We, we watch the local news, the San Diego news, and, and they're interviewing people about, you know, the um, Flex alerts that they get, 4 to 9 p.m., triple pricing right. for electricity to try to, you know, get people to lower their use of electricity mm-hmm. because they don't have, you know, the, the grid's unstable. And people are freaking out about their upcoming electrical bills because oh, absolutely. they're having a hard time now with inflation and gasoline costs to food and, costs. And, and the food costs to make their groceries. Right. Now they got their electric cost right. that's going to dig it. So a lot of people are going to be sitting in hot houses. Right. And that's healthy, uh, that's unhealthy. Unhealthy, yeah. That's unhealthy. Medical conditions. There's newborn babies right. out there, right? Yeah, I mean, right. it's just everybody is different in the heat. You know, as I'm getting older, I'm finding myself, oh my gosh, you know, this heat used to not bother me as much, you know, even just. As little as five years ago, but yeah, you know, yeah. 
So, I mean, you know, for people that are watching this, it probably doesn't affect them. But yeah, outside of California. Outside of California, but right. it does affect you because we're outsourcing our pollution. Yeah. Who's talking about that? Right. But we also touched on, you know, uh, coming out with, with, you know, the mandate of not allowing the ICE engines, right, Just new sales. But, you know, there's talks of other states adopting that. Yeah, you know, so that's fine. eventually it will, you know, that's fine. find its way yeah, across the nation. I, that, but I don't think it's going to gain as much traction as many people believe because of the mineral constraint problems. Oh, yeah. If you can't produce those million vehicles, those many millions of vehicles because the minerals are not available, or the skyrocketing cost of the minerals make that fifty thousand dollar car seventy thousand um, yeah, dollars. There's some cars in with about that price tag say, now, like say it. three years from now, when this really takes hold. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to price people out of the market. Demand's going to fall off. Right. So you know there is market dynamics that's involved with this as well. Absolutely. Uh, I. You know, if if I were a prognosticator and look at the look at my crystal ball and, and look into the future, I think we're going to see this hype for e for the for the for the electric vehicles start to come down to moderation where it's where it's more reasonable from an engineering and supply chain perspective, yeah. because economics are going to rule the day at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't think the government could come along and say, well, that's a $50,000 vehicle. We're going to give you half of the as credits, so it's only going to cost you twenty five, Because that, 20, that, that, that credit is going to come from somebody else. Somebody else is going to have to pay it. Right. There's no free anything, no. so it's just going to raise our taxes. So it's going to be spread across the, the, the base of the tax base. Mm-hmm. And um, so everybody's cost of living is going to rise. So at some point, economics are going to come into play, and people are going to say yes or no because we still have choice in the United States. The last time I checked, right? You know, um, you have the choice to go buy a new vehicle this year, right? Yeah. Or not? Or not? So it's your choice, right? Right. Um, and the other thing that I would say is. You know, I understand that L.A. County is not permitting new gasoline um, service stations. So they've put a, 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 a freeze or a halt on permitting new construction yeah, of gasoline uh, uh, stations, mm-hmm. fuel stations. So then the existing infrastructure is basically going to be, that's it. So... Um, you know, what's going to happen in the future? Hmm. Well, maybe they won't renew those permits. Maybe gas will become very scarce and hard to find. So then they force you into that electric car. That's a possibility. Yes. Really, I think the ultimate goal to this is to get people to congregate in dense populated areas so that we can use public transportation or bicycles. And that's where they really... Um, can exert more influence upon a population. So yeah. that's kind of where I think it's going. It, they're trying to bring it in that direction. Yeah. But that's my opinion, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to agree with that. No, it's, unfortunately, I mean, it makes sense, right? When they do that, you have uh, obviously more control over right. circumstances. Right. Instead of allowing the citizens the freedom to hop in their car and just go wherever they want, whenever they want. Right. So, no, that's good. I have one little last, it's kind of ironic. This was here recently in the news in West Virginia. There was a couple that were on vacation in an electric vehicle and they actually uh, broke down. They ran out of electricity. They ran out of power? power that car, right? There's, you know, the battery can only hold so much charge. And, you know, if you're not familiar with the EV vehicle, I don't personally own one. You know, you can only go... So far. So, um, ironically, it broke down in West Virginia, close to a mine, coal miners. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought this was kind of neat. You know, there, there's a picture here, you know, I wish I could pull it up on the screen. But, you know, 
the the good coal miners here uh, of West Virginia, you know, they they're people too. They have hearts, whether you you like it or not. You know, the, there's good men and women that work in the coal mines, right? So there's a, a few of them that actually came to the rescue of the people driving the EV, and it looks like they pushed them back to the plant so they could, you know, plug in, plug in, oh. and, and charge up <laughs> and nice. get back on the road. So I thought I would share that today, since obviously it's on topic, right? We're talking right. about the power grid. We're talking right. about EVs. Well, there you go again. The infrastructure is not there across the country. Um, there's, you know, you gotta. If I guess if you have an EV and you're you're going on a trip, you need to know where your charging stations are. Absolutely. And you need to block out the time it's going to take to get the charge that you need to get to your next destination. Right. So that's all part of it today if you're traveling. If mm-hmm. you're just coming and going from work, then that's a different story. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah. quick trip. Yeah, well, that's a good story. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought that was yeah. The guys that are producing ironic. the coal were pushing the EV that's to right. get them to safety. Right. Yeah. Good it's, people. Cool. Well, one last little... Um, uh, note I'd like to leave our uh, sit down today with is um, in a couple of weeks we're coming up to uh, the ARA Automotive Recyclers Association Convention and Expo so we're going to be in Orlando Florida and I believe it's September 22nd through the 24th mm-hmm. so if any of our viewers are in the Orlando area and and can make it to the expo please you know, come see us. We're in booth 203. We'd love to say hello and shake your hands. Yeah, that sounds great. So I thought I would just end it with that. Thanks for your time. It's at the Dolphin, the Disney Dolphin. Yes, the Disney Dolphin. All right. Great resort. So come, if you're available, you know, if you can make it, come, come talk come, to us. Come say hi. Yeah. <laughs>